Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Happy Monday. Today we read Acts chapter 18. Let's jump right in. So what I see here, we make lots of new friends, and I just had a quick takeaway that I have to add to it, okay. to what we were talking about. Um, but as Paul is traveling and going from place to place, um, you can imagine how excited he is if he happens to meet another believer. And something that we have had the privilege of experiencing because we haven't always lived in the same place is you have family, you have faith family all over the world. Like wherever you go, I'm going to bet you probably have family because... If there's a Christian there, you share the same father. And so I think that's a really cool thing that we see when Paul meets like Priscilla and Aquila, when they meet Apollos, that it's a quick connection. It's a quick relationship that they can make um, just because they have so much in common and so much to share because they share the same father. Our oldest just got back from Super Summer and um, it's kids who are like, growing into leaders and learning to love the Lord and lead out um, all over the state of Mississippi. And so a bunch of our kids went from our own youth group and they go and they're thrown into a pot with lots of other kids that they've never met before. And because of um, their all common relationship with Christ, they were quick to start relationships. And I mean good, solid, deep relationships based on the foundation of their faith. So that's a really cool thing. Another thing that I see is just the importance of all the players within the body of Christ, within the church. That is God's plan. Like, yes, the preacher is important. Yes, the main missionary or evangelist is really important. But also the people who make up the body, all the different roles are very important. Um, when they when they meet these people as they are traveling, like the the missionaries themselves, Paul or Barnabas or um, Timothy and is it Silas? Um, they are continuing to have to keep traveling to spread the gospel. And so they need these other key players to stay there to continue furthering the word of God. And then my favorite takeaway from today is just, it came from this last little section when Apollos, he loved the Lord and he was, they found him teaching and sharing the gospel, sharing everything that he knew about Jesus. And Priscilla and Aquila were witnessing what he was sharing. And they're like, oh my goodness, he doesn't know that we have the Holy Spirit. He doesn't know what happens. We get to tell him this. And so they pull him aside and they tell him. And so it, it's got to be life changing to him. And then he now has even more to share. But my takeaway is that these people at least how I feel, I feel like they're just so zealous and they have such a desire and a joy to share God's word. And I hope that I live that way. I want to live that way. I hope it just overflows out of how we live our lives that everything we learn and glean from God, we can't wait to share it with someone else. Yeah. I want to pick up a little bit on, because that was my big takeaway from this chapter too, is in this chapter, we meet a whole lot of people that had a whole lot of influence but they don't get a whole lot of mention in other places. Like Aquila and Priscilla end up basically starting a house church in their church and, and it thrives. Uh, so they're not Paul, like they're not writing scripture, but man, the, the church that meets in their house really does begin like changing the world, just sending out missionaries and, and loving the Lord. Apollos was probably one of the greatest New Testament preachers there are. He was just a, a natural fit for that. And uh, it starts out, he just knew the baptism of John. So uh, he had heard John the Baptist. He had, he, had, he had believed in repentance that John the Baptist was preaching, but he didn't know further about like Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So when he finds that out, it just, it, it's almost like things had been developing and developing and then all of a sudden exploded in his life. And Apollos is this wonderful key player in the New Testament. And so when you're reading through all of these, all of these stories, you have like, I like how Warren Wiersbe pointed out. He said, you know, most of us think about how great the Apostle Paul was. But how great do you think Paul would have been without his support system of friends? And probably not, not, as, not as effective as he right. was. But because he had friends like Aquila and Priscilla, because he had friends like Apollos and Silas and Timothy and Titus, because he had these, these friendships, 
they strengthened him in a way where his work was able to, to be blessed and, and kind of be multiplied. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote like this. He said, evidently, God doesn't intend for all of us to be rich or powerful or great, but he does intend for us to all be friends, to bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh, that's the way Paul you know, expressed all of this in Galatians 2. Then that kind of that feeds over into something. So uh, in the story, in the story that we have on the front end of the chapter, Paul is in Corinth. Now Corinth is a worldly place. As a matter of fact, to, to call somebody a Corinthian was a, was a high insult. They a lot of folks that I read they say that to call somebody a Corinthian was almost like calling calling a lady a prostitute. Like it was a it wasn't nice, all right? So they were known for being wicked. Paul lives in Corinth for about a year and a half doing ministry. He eventually writes them two books, First and Second Corinthians. But while he's there, he moves into a house that's right next door to a synagogue. So you got a Jewish leader who's living in the synagogue. You have a converted Jewish leader who is living next door. You know they missed each other. Like, you know they cross paths every day going to work, going to that place. Like, and Paul, he wants to be kind of where this guy is because they speak the same language, like literally and spiritually. Paul's got so much in common. Well, the Bible tells us that this guy, Crispus, he ends up getting saved. And then sometime later, Paul has this vision, and the Lord gives him great comfort. He says, Paul, I don't want you to worry why you're here. I've got people in this place. You, nobody is going to hurt you here, so just do your job. Well, sometime after that, Paul is brought before basically a city council meeting. They want Paul killed. They want him thrown out. They want him in trouble. I bet that that vision that God gave him earlier gave him great comfort. Like He, was, he, he goes, okay, well, I, I know I'm not going to get beat up here. So I just say what I want to say because God has already said I'm going to be okay here. Well, in the story, like the case is dismissed and the Jews are so angry. They take the, the synagogue leader, who, by the way, is not Crispus anymore. He's a guy named Sosthenes. And you got to wonder, well, why wasn't Crispus the, the leader of the synagogue anymore? Well, isn't that obvious? He got saved. And when he got saved, the Jews said, no, 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 you're, you're not our leader anymore. You're not our preacher. No, 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 you go, if you're going to believe that, you go over there. So they get a new guy. They take this guy out because evidently he hadn't been able to control things like they wanted to. And they, they beat him up. This is not in the Bible. But I do wonder, do you think Paul and Crispus showed up? The day after Sosthenes got beat up, because Paul had been beat up before, right? Too. He'd been whipped, he'd been he'd stoned, he'd, he'd had a lot. Did they show up at Sosthenes' house the next day and bandage him and like, and like clean his wounds and go, hey man, listen, we've been there. And yeah, the Bible didn't tell us that, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking a guy like Paul, who's got a heart for these Jewish leaders. He always goes to the synagogue. And to, he's been through what this guy meant. You just think, man, there was probably a lot happening relationally there. And that's the key to this chapter. These relationships that give Paul the opportunity to share, share the gospel. So look, as you think about your relationships, you got people you're related to, people that you are, that you live near, uh, people you go to work with, people you go to school with. I, I heard Fred Luter describe it one time that, that all of us as Christians ought to practice uh, not just evangelism, but frangelism, mm. F-R-A-N, friends, relatives, acquaintances, and neighbors. Who's my mission field? My friends, my relatives, my acquaintances, my neighbors. We practice frangelism everywhere we find somebody. Those relationships are God-given so that we might share the gospel. That's what I got out of this chapter. So listen, uh, so tell your friends about Jesus, but be a friend. Tell your friends. For, tell your friends. 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 All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs>